photography is quiet and unassuming as uh, anybody I've ever known. He was very uh, comical. Had amusing stories to tell, which I can't remember. I always thought of him, and I think most people did, as an eccentric. He hated government. He wouldn't um, accept um, his, his old age, his social securities checks. Thornhill MacDonald lived most of his life in Thornhill, Ontario. He was the son of J.E.H. MacDonald, a member of the illustrious group of seven painters. He was an only child, born in 1901, and the only descendant of any of the group of seven to achieve a measure of recognition as an artist. His work, mostly woodcuts and wash drawings of wildlife, farm life, and farm implements, earned him an enthusiastic following. Because he worked mainly in black and white, some people wondered if he was colorblind. Bill Armstrong, an artist and longtime resident of Thorn Hill. He kept saying he didn't like color. So I gathered that he was sort of bored with his father. It struck me that it was so odd that the son of the painter wouldn't like color. He would like black and white. Bruce Pierce, a major collector of Thoreau's work, wondered if Thoreau was colorblind. Dr. Peter Morse, Thoreau's physician for many years. I, I think that he, he knew color because I remember uh, paintings that he did back in wartime that were hung in some of the uh, barracks uh, or uh, messes and so on uh, around the country that, uh, that clearly had lots of color, bright yellows and, and hawks flying. Uh, there's some color in this uh, drawing behind me, but it's not extensively colored, uh, and I never saw him do anything, or never knew him to do anything uh, as extremely vibrant as uh, a group of seven. What was it like to grow up surrounded by famous artists, both in the studio building and at home in Thornhill? where Arthur Lismer, Fred Varley, Franz Johnson, and Franklin Carmichael used to visit regularly. From the journals of Emily Carr, dated November the 18th, 1927. I went to McDonald's studio today. His son Thorough, a boy all spirit, almost too fine to stay down on this earth, showed us his father's things, Mr. McDonald himself being at his school teaching. The boy is clever and will do great things one day, if he lives. They all speak of him as something apart. As a young man, Thoreau worked at the studio building, which still overlooks the Rosedale Ravine in Toronto. He did mostly illustrations for printing companies. Once in a while, he complained to old friends, Jean and Warren Bryce. He told us about working uh, in the studio and uh, uh, setting up displays and one thing and another. Uh, he wasn't very fond of that, was he, Gene? I think he felt that he got used as a Joe boy, <laughs> packing things up, moving things around, um, rather than them taking any interest in his interest in art. Bruce Pierce confirmed that Thoreau was a Joe boy for Lauren Harris at the studio building carding paintings, hanging exhibitions, and even completing his father's commercial work, for which he received no credit. Thoreau never spoke to me about his association with the group of seven. Um, he, he, he generally, he, I think he gen generally um, down, downplayed the importance of the group of seven, and um, um, and certainly his association with it, he was, uh, he, 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 he didn't seek the, the limelight. What sort of person was Thoreau? Patrick Trant, a neighbor and admirer of Thoreau's. Very retiring and shy and uh, I would say introverted and only open with the people that he saw on a fairly uh, close and, and intimate way. Thoreau, walking from his house to the Dominion store, 
with a peak cap and a long overcoat to the ground. Edith meeting him and saying she felt she should offer him a dime because he looked as though he hadn't eaten for a week. And then we discovered that the next door neighbor was handing in his dinner at night, that he was very well off. He assumed this this role of of the um, of the village rustic uh, and uh, wore it almost as a mantle. He was he really influenced my life profoundly. Uh, my interest in uh, natural things and trees. No indoor plumbing, but he chose to live that way. He seemed to think it was either a discipline or his tribute to uh, nature or maybe his sense of what was right. Some people have asked me whether whether he had, um, whether he was a, um, a celibate, a, a, a bachelor, a celibate bachelor all his life, because he did have a, 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 a good female friend. Um, Berakova, I think, was her name, and um, she was uh, an emigre. She was a white Russian. She uh, she went through uh, terrible uh, privations to get to Canada. And uh, uh, when she arrived, she had a struggle in order to set herself up as an artist. And it was Thold who who looked after her, and. Uh, uh, and, and saw her through some, some very difficult times. there was a romance which began shortly after she came to Canada in the 30s. After retiring from Upper Canada College as an art teacher, Julia went to live with Thoreau in 1963. The very next year, she suffered a stroke and died in 1970. Thoreau was alone again. Thoreau MacDonald died in 1989 at the age of 88. I wonder what Thoreau, an artist and lover of nature, would think of Thornhill today. Most of the countryside has been swallowed up by malls and monster houses. Thoreau once said he wouldn't sleep in the city for anything. <laughs> 